Thank you, Cody, and uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, as you are around the world to everyone out there. Um, looking forward to the questions. Just a quick update on perspective view on where we are. Our first commercial release was um, a year, just a year and a half ago, and I want to start by saying thank you to our customers who are out there. Uh, in this year and a half, we have done a lot. We've dramatically uh, grown our product. We have supported and trained so many of our customers out there into using Onshape to design fantastic products. That's ultimately the, the most exciting thing that's been happening and seeing you succeed. We started with a vision of full cloud CAD. We had a vision that if we built the world's first and only fully cloud architected CAD system, that we'd do that for the reason that we'd provide you, our customers, with the benefits of, of faster uh, faster design times, of better collaboration, of more innovative product results, of less time spent hassling with software and copying files. This was our vision, and it's been amazing to see it start to be realized. But it's just the start, because we're here every day. We get up and come in, and we're trying to do a better job for you. That's with our product. That's um, with everything beyond our product, our support team, our customer success team, we're always looking at better ways to train you. We're looking at what's working, what's not working, and what we can do better, um, whether it's it's having better uh, chat on the website or better videos and training materials. We're doing all these things constantly. Our partner program, we're working with the partners that we know that you need to have compatible with us and integrated with us. Most recently, we're excited about our new learning center and, as always, the, the new releases of the product that come along. And so I'll just say again, um, that it, while we add to the product all the time, once in a while you take a perspective view and you see that we have added through 23 releases, I think, since since launch, about every three weeks since we've launched new releases with so many features you can't even keep track of them. I mean, this, this diagram, you probably can't even read it. It's uh, so much printed here. but really hundreds of additional features and functions that you, our, our users, are asking us for. And hopefully every time we come out with these release, releases, you're improving your work with Onshape. And many more to come, of course. And again, the main message I have for you today is thank you to all of you. Uh, to our customers out there, um, what you do, the work you do, the products you build is ultimately the business that we're in. And we're delighted to see and everyone here at Onshape knows that that you know the focus of our business is not just selling you our software; it's seeing you build awesome products, and that's the exciting thing. So I just have to say a big thank you. I don't get a chance to talk to you all very often, and I'll just say thank you very much for all your support. And with that, let's turn over to questions. All right. So again, right. just uh, just a reminder: there's a questions dialog in the Go to Webinar Control Panel. That's where you'll ask any questions that you like of John, and then I'll uh, read those questions aloud and let him answer. So please, if you haven't already, um, type in a question in the questions section of that Go to Webinar Control Panel, and then we'll just start going through them. I see a few good questions already, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, the first question, any possibility of expanding the Onshape model to take over electrical CAD as well as mechanical? Uh, the answer there is no. Right now, we have no plans to do electrical CAD. We work with partners to do it, um, both partners that are um, released. And, of course, you can always go to our um, – our, uh, I'll ask Dan or Cody to post the link as a reminder to our App Store page where you can find all our partners – we also are working with partners that are not announced yet in the field of electrical CAD. We have companies come to us and want to work on partnerships. So while we can't make any commitment there, I can tell you that's an active area of partnership. But no, we, we have no plans to do it ourselves. All right. So the next okay. question. The next. What is the biggest challenge and biggest good surprise you've encountered since the inception of Onshape? Wow, the biggest challenge. Um, well, I think there's, I'll, I'll answer there's been a big challenge in different phases. I mean, I think initially we dealt with the challenge of, of could we make a whole CAD system work in a full cloud architecture? Could we have real-time collaboration, real-time data management, real-time deployment? No one had ever done it before. And so people said, a lot of people told us it was impossible. 
you know. And uh, and so I think the biggest challenge was in the early days um, building, you know, building, proving that the system could work. And uh, I know Dan, I'm looking at Dan here with me in the room here, Dan Murphy, uh, and he was here early on and he knows that that was a big challenge. So then probably I'd say as we shift years now into the current state we're in post-release, the, the big challenges are the enormous amount of functionality that users require and performance and kind of a never-ending need you have. That's one of the big challenges we have is how do we prioritize it? The meeting I just came from was a prioritization meeting where we sit around and we say, here's what I'm hearing from customers, here's what I'm hearing from, from, from support, customer success, we're actually all in the room, and trying to plan and optimize what kinds of things should go in the next release of the product. So the enormous amount of functionality, that's a big challenge. And the other thing is the challenge of growth in serving a larger and larger customer base as we grow and trying, like I said, like the learning center is a, is a response to saying we have, when you have an enormous growth in users and customers and enormous growth in product functionality, it's a huge challenge to make sure that that everyone is getting the tools they need to learn and use it properly and the support they need. So I would say those are the those are the you know the challenges these days are building out the the functionality and prioritizing it and and training supporting a fast growing customer base. All right, next question: How much does AI play a role in the future of CAD? Wow, great question. How much does AI play a role? Well, I would say that that right right now um, it's not clear exactly how it will play a role. You know, so 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 right now I'm just saying conjecture because no one has really um, launched or even really demonstrated any particularly compelling um, idea there. If we look at it, I can see a number of potential applications. I'm not saying that we are or are not working on any of these. I'll just say the potential applications I would see. It could be things like uh, simple things, like for instance, giving you default values in a um, in a dialogue based on an intelligent view of what you've done in the past. That would be that would be one small thing. In terms of big things, it could be watching you um, design and, and maybe predicting which features might be next. It could be saying, "Gee, I noticed you've done this pattern of activity several times in a row. You want to automatically repeat it." Could be, um, of course, giving a new generation approach to part library matching. Now, there are several products on the market that do geometric search, and I think they're pretty good products. And I'm, you know, I just think that AI offers the potential to do that job better than it's done before. Um, uh, suggesting um, uh, uh, suggesting standard content could be another one. You know, it could watch you put in content and say, Amazon, like, gee, I see you're putting in that part from a uh, parts library or standard content. A lot of times people who look at that one also look at this one. And so those are, are, um, are some of the areas that I would see it, um, see it, see it happening. And uh, uh, we can probably also use AI in areas like help, like maybe someday we'll have natural language help. And the kind of question now that, as I said earlier, one of our big challenges is in growing, you know, of course, training and support. And instead of having to ask a technical expert like Cody, you'll be able to 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 uh, put the same kind of words you'd give you'd present to Cody that are very sophisticated into an AI engine and get a very uh, a very high quality response. So those are some of the areas I would say great potential, but so far no one has really illustrated how it'll unfold and. Uh, if you have ideas, I'm interested in, in your ideas too. So you can always uh, uh, shoot those into the the answer area, maybe, and and maybe um, maybe we'll do a forum post so that we don't get distracted here. If there's enough of that feedback coming back in, I'll organize it and say here's a summary of the AI potential discussion from the the webinar today. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a very hot button topic right now, certainly. So um, two, a, a two-part question, really short. I'll, I'll shorten it up just a bit, so forgive me. But who do you think Onshape is for, designer, engineer, shop owner? And second, how do you think the modeling capabilities address the needs for industrial designers compared to other parametric CAD tools? Okay, so um, who is it for? Well, the answer is it can be, I think it can be for all the people you mentioned, you know, designer, engineer, shop floor, owner. 
I think for Onshape compared to traditional products of, that I've worked on in my past, we see a wider range of users and more of them because it's so much easier for the additional user to jump in. Like, whereas a, uh, this is obvious, you know, obviously an owner or shop floor manager, they're not, they might not install a heavyweight license of CAD on their computer and they may not want to mess around with intermediate file formats or viewers. So as a result, they don't, they don't have it. But with Onshape, with real-time deployment, you hit the share button in your email and boom, they're on. All our Onshape users know that. I know some of you are not users, haven't experienced that. So what it means is customers report to us that there's more, uh, more users, and we have statistics about you know user clusters that tell us that that our average you know usage cluster in a company is larger, I think, than other products. And so that so it's for really for all of them. Obviously, they're all not, not going to be doing the same thing. You know, the the owner isn't likely to be doing advanced modeling. Um, uh, next, um, next question about um, industrial design. I would say, you know, fair comment is, is it, uh, what I found is industrial designers have a wide range of personal preferences, first of all. Some people really, there's really a personal flavor to it. Right now, I would say we do great for, for industrial designers in the space of geometry we handle, which would not include a lot of traditional organic shape, though that is changing rapidly. Um, so, so those of you who have been watching our recent releases carefully, you'll see we recently introduced some really nice tools in, in um, curve development. And some of my industrial designer friends tell me that curves is, is where the action is to build good surfaces and shapes. So it, it's an area of rapid growth. I would not try and replace a traditional heavy-duty freeform surfacing approach with Onshape yet. But if your products fall within the range of shapes we do, within the lofting, sweeping we do, and again, check it lately because we've added a lot there, even in the last few weeks. If, you're, if your needs fall in that area, we do have quite a few industrial designers who love us, you know? And I've seen some products designed with us in industrial design that I'm like, I'm just blown away by. Like, I almost can't imagine how they did it, you know? And so, so I would say the answer is check it out and depends on, the, depends on your personal taste and the range of the level of shape you need that could affect whether we're the right right tool there. In many cases, we are. Next question. All right. So will you talk right. a little about how you see CAD and Onshape being used in the future for new product innovation? How do you see Onshape fitting in the bigger picture, bringing new products to market? Oh, well, I think it's a continuation of the way that it's happening now, bringing new products to market. I mean, new products is where it's at with us. That's where our user base is, is, is working on. And I think we bring, we let people bring them to market faster and with more innovation. Those are the, the two common themes. And the innovation comes from a freedom to explore more ideas because of our data management setup, branching, merging, and version control built in. And the, the idea that, that you're collaborating with other people in real time, so you, you tend to harness more input from other people than you can with traditional design review processes of meetings or emailing stuff around. And so I think it's about speed and it's about innovation and that's what you see. Um, if you wanna see some great new product stories, check out our, our customer stories page. Again, even you Onshape veterans may not even know about this. I'll ask um, uh, Dan or Cody to post that link on the webinar right now. And on our customers page, you'll see stories like NAFCO built this new LED lighting system. That's a great story. And many, many others, Formula One race cars, medical devices, 3D print, whole 3D printers, 3D printing accessories. Again, one of the things that, that, that we do in our business, of course, is we can only talk about customers who give us permission, and those are the ones on the, on the website that I can tell you that, that we're seeing. So the role for us is a prominent one in new products. And I think, you know, it's growing. We're seeing it now. We'll see more of it. All right. Next question. All right. Relative to other functionality, how complicated has it been to tackle extensive surfacing capabilities? Um, how complicated? I would say, um, uh, of course, I'm not the one who's writing it. So I'm looking down the hall at, um, at uh, I can glance out the window here and see the people who really write that stuff here at Onshape, and they're the ones who, who you know, who, who you really want to meet in these webinars someday, too. And um, I think, you know, I'm going to speak for them a little bit and say, I don't think it's um, harder for us. I think in some cases it's easier for us to do it. 
because of our clean architecture and our feature script programming language. Um, gives us a huge edge on implementing new features. It's one of the reasons you'll see our feature set growing so quickly, and hopefully you find more reliably than systems in the past. I think for us, and we have all the talent, we have the, the, the people in our company um, here, you know, the geometry PhDs we have in this building, I mean, honestly, they're the ones who wrote your old surfacing products. They know how to do it, and they're, they're itching to do it better. It's really mostly a question of prioritization. So my answer is probably easier for us to do it with a modern clean architecture to the extent we haven't. It's again, that question of prioritization. We have to trade off, do we, do we put them to work on that kind of surfacing or do we put them to work on better importing tools or do we put them to work on better drawings or do we put them to work on sheet metal? You know, these are the decisions we make and that, that probably informs it um, more Hopefully that's a, that gives you the answer. And I'll go check with them and get the real story. So I'm pretty sure that's correct. All right. So next question. And this is a question that's kind of a theme throughout several different questions. I got it in an email as well. And it's, it's um, you know, how do you see AI, virtual reality, mixed reality, machine learning affecting CAD and product development in the future? Well, okay. Great question. So I'll point to my AI answer for a few moments ago. And I'll take, which I would also say goes with the machine learning, which is these days when people talk about AI, it's very machine learning driven, um, which is, I believe, like the famous example of like Google Translate and what's going on in image recognition and a lot of Thomas vehicles all use machine learning based AI. There's a whole body of AI that's old fashioned AI that, that I, I actually wrote. Here's a little trivia point. My master's thesis in college was written on an AI application to CAT in 1986. It's called Geometric Feature Extraction Using Production Rules. And I believe it, it's probably online somewhere. If it's not, I'll, I'll, be, gla I'll be glad to send you a copy because I don't think I'd be honored if anyone even looked at it. But we used, we used what were called rule-based systems to look at shapes, in my case, aluminum extrusions and diagnose problems. So I'm telling you, these ideas have been old in AI. Machine learning makes them work much better than they ever could before, plus compute power. Um, I wanna turn though to, so, so um, I'll refer to the earlier answer. On the subject of virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, huge potential there, huge. And I actually, I'll admit it, I'm a, a huge fan of mixed reality, which I view is, is different than virtual reality. Virtual reality meaning you put on a headset and you're locked in a virtual world. You don't see the real world, you just see the virtual world. Well, I, I cannot comment on any aspect of, of Magic Leap other than what's on their website. You know, I'd point you to the website for Magic Leap and it sort of hints at the future. And there's there's many magazine articles in Wired and other magazines that talk about mixed reality. In the mixed reality, you're sort of seeing the real world um, and synthetic imaging in one field of view. And I view that as tremendously more promising than the pure virtual reality, especially for designers and engineers. And I think you're gonna see in the future of CAD I believe that mixed reality could make a profound impact. We don't have anything to announce on it. You know, as I said earlier, we have to prioritize everything. But I think it's likely that if we come back in a decade, we'll see engineers seated at their desk and using, you know, maybe they're using the computers and phones and tablets of today, but maybe they're also using something that would resemble what happens in Iron Man. You know, where they're, they're floating in space models of objects that we can all see and interact with at huge scale, at huge resolution, where essentially you're no longer bounded by the limitations of a display screen. And I know for CAD users in particular, you never have enough screen real estate, right? You never have enough monitors, you never have enough ability to display it. And so for me, the promise of being able to use the entire world as your display surface um, in a very natural way is one of the many ways that, that mixed reality um, could be profound. And I think also our architecture is ideally suited for it, where, where the point is, you know, because we, we're the only system that doesn't require a big download of, of CAD software onto a device, it's unlikely you're gonna download a CAD system and copy files to a mixed reality device or to today's 
you know, to, to today's devices, that's really unlikely. I think you're going to need a cloud-based approach where you yourself will be using multiple devices. So huge potential to make it easier to design and visualize with the use of mixed reality. I'm a fan, but nothing to announce yet. So. All right. Sorry, that's a long answer there, but it's a big subject. No, and, it, and it's asked a few times, so it's definitely good to spend the time on it. Uh, the next question, congratulations on the recent launch of the Onshape Learning Center. What is your vision for that division of Onshape, and where do you see it five years from now? Oh, well, well first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I'll pass that along to our Learning Center team. We'll be delighted to hear it. We're getting tons of great feedback. I also noticed that for me personally, you know, I post a lot of things about Onshape, of course, and my learning center post I was telling Dan got picked up by you know just just um, anecdotally felt like there was enormous interest so so um, so the learning center is great where's it going in five years I just think you'll see the first direction is to add more content right it's it's to say I mean it's to say people like the idea and they want to see more um, they want to see more training on more different subjects um, uh, I know you know for those of you who, who aren't familiar, you should take a look, and I'll ask that, that again, we post the link to Learning Center here. You know, there's 80 videos in there now. It covers an enormous range of product, but there's always more to do. And so I think we're going to, we're going to, five years from now, you'll see it be a bigger place that's flourished with even more resources. You'll obviously see that the material that we have there, the 80 plus videos and the, the, the three main um, tracks, right, the three main uh, tracks, you'll see those get refined through usage. We're going to learn a lot as, as the first 1,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 people use these things. We're going, to, we're going to learn what works and what doesn't and improve them, you know, the pathways, we call them. And so um, I think this is, this is going to be an important part, an ongoing part of our future. And as the product expands, there'll be more need for this. And, and um, as we expand to more and more users and more and more industries, more need for it. And so we're, we're, we're excited. So just, just see more of it. I also think we'll, we'll continue to beef up um, uh, live training as well. I don't want to forget about that. We also run live training classes over the web, for those of you who haven't tried those, and that's going to beef up as well. And we have the university education tools as well, the university course curriculum, and even a, a, a class on intro to intro to CAD. Um, so there's a lot there in these tools, and they'll just keep growing. All right. So next question. There was much effort to do sheet metal. Is there any plans in other popular industries? Plastics, for example. Um, uh, yes, we have we have plans to to do sheet metal type work in other areas, um, uh, and uh, we consider a bunch of them, you know. And again, it's just about priority and speed. And uh, I hope that we'll get to some of the other disciplines. Uh, uh, also, remember that in addition to tools we might release for something like you know weldments or plastics in the future. Um, you, you should look to our feature script library. And again, I, I'm, I'm going to ask, we're, we'll keep showing you the, these pages. You know, if you go to the feature script library, while these are not at all meant to eliminate the need for us to do comprehensive work in these areas, you can find a lot of tools that are really helpful. And customers will tell me that, um, gee, John, you know, you don't have, you, while you don't have uh, built in weldments yet, we have a tremendous framing tool in feature script that there's customers using. Um, from some amazing examples, the Beams tool up there, Dan's got on screen, um, I saw in our forum, in the public part of the Onshape forum, you can find a customer in Europe who posted some amazing um, trusses he had made with that beam structure, very serious production work. Again, wiring, you'll see that. Now, we don't have a built-in wiring package. Should we someday? Absolutely. But for now, we've got a nice tool that I believe Noah Flaherty wrote, right, the wiring tool. Very impressive, very useful. The feature script platform gives us the opportunity um, for you to develop your own features as well and use ones that look, feel, and behave just as we wrote them, um, you know, using our language. And those of you who don't know about feature script, it's a language for defining the feature commands like extrude, fillet, shell. You can make your own features that look, feel, and perform just as good as our own extrude, fillet, and shell 
because it's the same language we use to write our features. When we write lofting or curve tools or sweeping, we use FeatureScript. And best part is we make all of our source code for those features available under an open source license. And it's all online. You can find all about the FeatureScript page. So, so yes, we're planning to do work on more industry-specific and domain-specific features built into Onshape. That's always our, our goal. But in the meantime, and forever, we also have custom feature script features that could help you through some of these situations now. Okay. Is there any plan to add any animation motion functionality to Onshape? If so, when? Uh, animation motion, we, we already have some. Um, again, this is, where, this is where one of the phrases I, I, I'm just going to pop in. If you haven't seen Onshape lately, you haven't seen Onshape. You know, we've added so much. And those of you who checked in a while back, first of all, make sure you know about our existing Assembly Animate, which, um, Cody, was it you did a, um, a video? And, and did we have a webinar on that? I can't remember. Yeah, I know there's videos. Did. Yeah, there's it. videos on it as um, well. If you do a search for Animate Mates, you'll find uh, content that shows you, walks you through that yeah. process. Yeah, let's bring that up on the screen so you can see it. So the first thing is, I mean, our, our, our built-in animate. Now, that's a simple kinematic animate of an assembly mate, right? I'll, I'll rely on Cody, the expert here, to catch me on. But if you want to do more than that, like a real dynamic simulation, by all means, go to our partner program. And, um, and again, I always have to be careful about which partners are announced and not. By the way, the way I know. With this update, yeah, leave it. Oops. The way I find out that information is often the same way you do, which is I go to the Onshape App Store. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to go there right now and make sure I only mention products that are shipping and not um, some of the many products that we have. You can look in the App Store um, under um, Simulation. I think we'll find it there. Yeah, so Simwise 4D. That's um, uh, you know, take a look at that. That's a desktop product that's connected. You can do some really, um, you can do rigid body dynamics. We also have excitingly, for those who may not know, an integration with MathWorks. And that's the one I want to make sure is shipping in public <laughs> there with the MathWorks um, Simscape. Um, and you can do a systems driven simulation with that. And so check out the partner products um, online. Yeah, you scroll down there, you'll see. Um, uh, Simwise is, uh, gives you dynamics and Simscape, really powerful. And, uh, uh, you know, of course we have stress and other simulation, but you're talking about motion. Uh, Simscale, I believe, does some motion work as well. And so look to our partners uh, to do motion simulation and remember that we've got some great assembly animation built into Onshape. And also check out our rendering partners. I believe, again, some of our rendering partners let you do, yeah, there is. Um, uh, SimLab, uh, I believe SimLab and uh, OneRender also does animation renderings, right? So again, not going to go through every application partner here, but I encourage you to do. I'm just popping some examples up there. Is take the time to look at the um, look at the App Store. If you have questions, you can jump on the forum or um, or check with us in in support. We'll walk you through it. But tons you can do. All right, today. next question. Have you got any performance comparative metrics with respect to tra traditional CAD systems and their trends in the future? Yeah, great question, by the way. I'm glad you asked. So we do, we do compare performance and our users do to traditional systems. And a few thoughts there. I would say today we, what we find is deep, you know, there, there's a difference performance characteristic to a cloud-based system. Meaning, Meaning what we find is that, that um, A, some things are faster in Onshape and some things are not as fast. You know, it depends. Um, uh, and also the, the feeling you get for what impacts performance is a little different. Like a lot of times, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to sweat so much your CPU power or, or memory for the most part because we, we take care of that. You don't, have, you don't have to worry about all these configuration things. If you look at a trend, this is one of the reasons to get really excited about full cloud CAD. If you look at a trend, I want you to think about two things that are changing the world. One is CPU speed and the other is network speed. Very different stories on how those things are changing. And um, CPU speed, which is 
traditional CAD is pretty much CPU speed bound, meaning that, that the improvements come from faster CPUs. For many years of my career, we got this free lunch in CPU speed improvements. In other words, every few years, CPU speed would, would double, really every year. And so you just got a new CPU. Yeah, thanks. Dan's bringing up this whole presentation here that I, I gave that had this slide in it. So if you look at the green data, you see CPU speed, this is a log scale, was really advancing through the 90s. Today it's leveled out. So to get to the point, CPU speed in your new computer is no, no faster than your old computer. And it might be slower because what happens is you add a few more cores. Traditional CAD, not very good at taking advantage of the cores. Now, let's consider network speed. Okay, on shape, as many of you know, faster the network, the faster we perform. In case you haven't noticed, network speed is going up like crazy. I don't know if we have a stat up there, but chances are the network speed you experience sitting at wherever you are right now is probably 30% faster than it was a year ago. Maybe it's 20%, in some cases it's 100%. You know, my house, I, um, I went from 100 to 300 megabit and I had to do basically nothing, you know? And so what's happening is CPU speed is leveled out. There is no way to make CPUs faster than anyone knows about. It's a physics problem. Go do your reference on Wikipedia on that. Network speed is getting faster all the time, very dramatically. And so what you're gonna see is more and more Onshape gets faster, not only because of the improvements we make with our team, which is really improving performance all the time, but also because network speed is getting faster. Traditional CAD, kind of stuck in a box. CPU is not getting any faster, using multiple cores a little bit at the edges. And then the real potential long-term for us is we can use not, not two or three or four cores or eight cores in the local CPU, we can use 2,000 cores or 8,000 cores in the cloud to put to work for you. Now, we're not doing that yet, but we can do that. And you don't have to change a thing. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to buy a new computer or all that. So really, so the, the, the bottom line answer is right now we feel we're faster in a lot of areas and a little slower in some, and we work on those every day with you. Um, that's the first point. Secondly, long-term trends are clear. Advantage cloud. You know, CPU, local CPU bound applications have nowhere to go. There's no free lunch coming. Cloud apps have a lot on their side for long term, and I'm hoping we capitalize on that to bring you better and better um, performance. All right. Again, long answer, but great question. Next one. Um, are there any plans to add any sheet mail capability to develop folding carton or corrugated packaging? Corrugated packaging. Um, my sense is you can use our, our sheet metal. I believe we have users who use our existing sheet metal to do some um, folding cardboard and corrugated. Um, Cody, again, I turn to Cody. What do you set the, um, what is it? You set the, you set the K factor to zero or something. Is that what you do to get, exactly, to get yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. there are yeah, specific I'm, applications where, you know, certain <laughs> features, and, and this is another example where a feature script might be really, really useful. Um, but what I would say is there's actually a public model that, that shows this. Our own Neil Cook created it. If you do a search in the public models for cardboard box, you'll find a good example of unfolding a box, you know, which is, albeit a simple example, but it's a good one for this, this question. Yeah. My guess is you'll do pretty well with it and um, with, with our existing tools and check out Neil's model. And this may be an area for some feature script development. Could be perfect. I mean, I could imagine that if you did a family of similar cardboard boxes, that you could use a little feature script to make a killer app here. And I know I've talked to um, uh, one of our consumer products companies coming to mind now who said, oh, we're going to use, we're using Sheet Metal for our, our point of sale box. They didn't expect to, but they are. <laughs> you know, for a clever box design that they had. So, so yeah, absolutely go to it. Next question. What do you see as the inflection point of industry-wide adoption for SAS MCAD? What does that look like? Um, for, for SAS, I'm sorry, for SAS and CAD, the inflection point? No, no, SAS MCAD, mechanical CAD. Oh, for SAS MCAD, right. For mechanical CAD, SAS. So what's the inflection point? Well, good question. We We... We're starting to see, um, obviously, tremendous interest and in adoption. You know, I mean, 
Interest is huge and adoption is happening very nicely, but you're right, it's still the early days. We haven't hit that inflection point yet. When does that happen? Well, I, I try and go it in on by saying, first of all, the inflection point for SaaS in almost every other software category has already happened. It's like we're like in this, we're like in this um, anachronistic, is that the right word? Like this old fashioned world where, you know, where we're, where I can assure you that MCAT is the la like the last industry on earth that's still talking about this. Like, you know, or maybe ECAD, you know, but like everywhere else has adopted it. You know, it's, it's funny because I go to events with um, other, other entrepreneurs, other people who are building companies um, and, uh, and we'll talk about problems we have and they're like, oh, well, what do you mean? You know, you're, you're doing cloud. Why is that new? Like, didn't the industry all go to cloud already? You know, and I'm like, no. They're like, well, what do you mean? You know, so, okay, so when is it going to happen? I don't know for sure, but if I had to guess, I would say that, that certainly, certainly, um, I would say five years from now, people will no longer say, wow, you can make CAD, MCAD work in the cloud, huh? I think what they're going to say five years from now is, wow, you can still make MCAD work without the cloud? You know, like to people who still have old systems, because the old systems are going to be around forever. I mean, you know, you know, you know, 10, 20 years from now, you're still going to see traditional CAD around. It's not going anywhere. We're not going to eliminate it. Just as, as, as 3D CAD didn't eliminate 2D CAD, there's still millions of seats around. And, you know, it's not going to all go away. But it'll be like curious, like, wow, that's cool. You can actually, you know, <laughs> you can actually use use installed software to do that. I didn't realize that. I thought you needed a cloud. I think that's probably five to, you know, five, seven years away when that starts happening. And so I guess the tipping point for me would still be years in the future. You know, I don't think it's going to happen in a few weeks or months. Um, but it will happen, you know. By the way, I used to get the same question about Windows in my past life. People would say to me, well, most people don't look at PCs for engineering. When do you think that'll be popular? And I gave the same kind of answers. Because when I started building CAD on Windows, people thought it was a ridiculous idea. They're like, well, no one does CAD on Windows. I go, oh, everyone's going to do CAD on Windows. I feel the same way about cloud. In fact, if anything, cloud is a bigger change than Windows was. So. All right, next question. How big is your server farm and where is it? Wow, great question. Um, so, uh, well, first of all, I'd say um, uh, I don't know how to answer how big it is in an exact way. I'm not sure. You know, I would say that that we have um, we have servers. Um, we probably have at any given moment. I'm going to take a guess at saying hundreds of servers running. Okay, as opposed to not tens and not. I wouldn't say we have thousands running all. It's possible we have over a thousand. I just wouldn't, you know, it's not like a hundred thousand. So if you're looking at order of magnitude estimate, it's probably closer to a thousand. I don't know the exact number to give you, to be honest. And it, it, I do know this though, it changes all the time. Like servers, while we're in this call, we probably have servers starting and, and stopping as, as um, you, our customers, increase demand. Like if all of a sudden a lot of people logged in and started doing more feature modeling, we probably spin up more servers in response to that. You know, and you don't have to worry about that. We do and and we that works really well for us. So the number fluctuates all the time. In terms of where they're located, it's all over the world. We have um we have uh uh server locations in uh in the United States in multiple locations. We have them in Asia, in many locations, and in Europe. And so we try to have global coverage. And that's honestly one of the things we're always tuning. You know, as we get feedback from users and we have ways to in instrument it, our server, our server uh, cloud operations team, uh, led by John Russo, a JR as we call him, who's given some webinars here, right, that have been received with great interest. Um, he runs that, and he's always looking at, at data and, and suggesting where we need to um, add, or in some cases where we don't, where we're overbuilt, where we just don't need um, uh, to have it. But it's um, it's a very uh, it's a very cool part of what we do, and it happens behind the scenes from what you generally think about. But I'm sure glad you asked, and hopefully that gives you sheds some light on how we do it. 
Next question. What is the on the roadmap with regards to MBD capabilities? Oh, MBD. Okay, it's one of those things we'd love to do. Um, and that's model-based definition for some of the audience who, who know what it is. If you don't, you can look it up. In the interest of time, I'll just say we'd love to do it. And I'll return to my earlier answer about priorities. It's just a question of where does it fall into our priorities. I would say, you know, we will try and fit it in when we can. I'll just tell you that it's not something that we're working on at this moment intensively, you know, about to pop out. It is something that's on our radar and part of our vision for the future. But again, it's, it's just where does it fit in all the priorities against everything we're doing um, for all of you. All right. So next uh, question. Uh, Are you currently exploring hosting right. instances of Onshape in GovCloud for ITAR customers? Uh, we've given a little thought to that, to the GovCloud and ITAR world. We have not done it and we don't have a, you know, I wouldn't give you a concrete plan. We could do it. Again, it's about priorities and where do we prioritize it. And um, we've tried to stay more focused on things that will help the mainstream of our customer base where we haven't seen a lot of action. We do have customers who, who have come to um, be confident that our approach is more secure than their traditional approach. Um, I'm not going to say, you know, we're not ITAR, so I, I want to be clear about that. Um, but uh, people who value data security are now choosing us over other solutions because of the fact that we don't, you know, we don't spread copies around. We have a blog post about this you can, you can read, but, you know, you're not copying files around. And um, with any other system, if you're involving multiple people in editing, they have perfect digital copies on their computer, unless you're, unless you're virtualizing the whole data center, which, you know, people do, but for most customers, it's not really an option. And they're, they're copying files everywhere, and people find our approach to be more secure because we're the only system that doesn't put a copy of your, you know, by the way, none of you, none of you, you know, none of you are, when you share an Onshape model by hitting the share button, I hope you all try the share button out in Onshape instead of just routinely sending files, which we do support. But if you hit that share button, the recipient is not getting a digital copy. And you should all know that we've had the option for some time now to share without download rights. So you can share with someone and say, I need you to work on this design. They can edit the design, but they may not copy or export it. That kind of security puts us in another league that is above, in my opinion, in most ways above even ITAR certified processes that rely, ITAR itself is about trusting, you know, somebody else in a sense. And um, with us, uh, you can share with somebody else without giving them any rights to make a copy. Enormous security advantage. Um, not to mention you have an audit log of every change that's ever been done and so forth. But that's the answer. Someday, maybe, but right now, no. Okay. Um, we, have, uh, we have about 15 minutes left, and there's a lot of questions remaining. So um, okay. forgive me. We're, we're not going to have time, everyone, to get to everyone. What I'm going to try to do is pick out some of the common theme questions that I see that are very similar. Um, and, and one of them is, does Onshape currently have any topology optimization tools? If not, is it on the roadmap? Um, topology optimization, optimization tools, we do, we do not have within Onshape. Um, we have some tremendous partner applications coming in that area with some of the people who are the leaders um, in, in the field. And in fact, um, uh, I, I just don't know what I, I could or should announce in that. But you'll see, keep your eye on the App Store, and you'll see partners coming with that. Also, you can make parameter space optimization searches in Onshape with even with feature script features. Um, uh, can help you do stuff like that. But um, uh, anyway, the answer is check for the partner program. If you're talking about some of the kind of very cool new tools for that, um, particularly for additive parts. All right, next question. What are the long-range plans for development? Uh, you focused on drawings. Now you seem to be focused on surfacing. What's next? What's after that? Well, we're, we're, we're adding a lot. Um, we're not only, I wouldn't say we're focused on surfacing. I'd say surfacing and curves is one area. We've added a lot in performance. Uh, you're going to see us continue to drive in sheet metal. The um, lofting command, I don't know if that was surfacing. You're seeing more in lofting. You will see surfacing tools. 
data import and, out, and, and export. Um, you know, we we um, are very interested in configurations. That's something we're actively, you know, you'll see across the board improvements throughout these um, throughout these areas. Those are um, uh, those are some of the highlights. Data management tools too, revision, release management, those kinds of things um, that you see. Um, you'll see improvements across the board in all these areas. And I, I would say a good way to get a read on it is look at look at the areas that that are coming out. Look into what's new blog page. Let's let's shoot that up on the screen again. Those of you who don't know, it's easy to check the what's new blog. Um, I always, I always check, I would read all these posts and check all the videos, and uh, you can too. And now that, that'll give you an idea of the kinds of things we find as priorities, and it's, it's all these areas are, are still, um, we're still working on. And partner program, always more partners and better partner integrations. All right, so another question right. that I see is a common theme here is, uh, does Onshape have a public roadmap? Hmm. We do not have a, a public roadmap um, uh, per se that the, you know, locks us in. We do have a lot of plans internally, and we use an agile method. So we do we are able to reprioritize, and we rapidly do every few weeks, really, based on the latest information we have. And so we don't like to make a commitment. You know, we could we could um, we don't come out with a list and say here's all the features that are coming because sometimes we don't know how long something will take. Um, sometimes we don't know the scope of it until we beta test it. I know uh, if any of you are particularly interested in beta testing a particular area, you certainly can can post um, or send a message to um, to one of us. However, however we're proposing getting feedback. You know, we do look for testers for new areas. Um, and uh, and so so for a lot of reasons we don't come out with an exact um, exact uh, uh, schedule. So no, we don't have we don't have a public statement on you know here's exactly what's coming in, in the next few next few releases or over the next year or something. Well, you we have had webinars. We've had webinars with Dave where we'll talk about we do talk about what's in our vision, what's in our priority. As I'm doing here about some of the topics brought up today. Next. Question. So how does Onshape handle commercial components or a fastener library? Um, we handle um, uh, commercial components and fastener libraries in um, uh, with uh, our partner applications um, that are really uh, really useful. You know, you can check out the again if you go to the partner page, you can check out our applications. Um, we have in um, in content uh, we have trace parts. And uh, I know uh, trace parts very popular at Cadenas. We also have inside of Onshape um, the whole whole generator that's got standards in it. And then you'll find things in the um, in the public library too. You find some co content models as well. Cody, did I miss anything? Nope. I think that's a good one. Definitely check out uh, Cadenas and trace parts. Huge libraries of content. Yeah, what is it, 100 million models or something in those two? It's like 300 million. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. So the next and, question. Yeah, uh, you get those in our app store. Yeah, go ahead. So how cutting edge is your server hardware, and how often do you upgrade? Um, so we, um, the answer is it's very cutting edge. You know, um, we, we, are, we are running on, you know, state-of-the-art infrastructure, uh, and in terms of upgrade, I mean, we don't really talk about upgrading it. Um, we we move to, you know, we move to different types of cloud server instances all the time. You know, there really isn't a notion. Uh, uh, you, again, you have to imagine a world where our our, um, our server resources are not like as fixed as you'd imagine. They're 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 constant. There's many of them. They constantly come online. Um, uh, and uh, we're all, I, as far as I know, we're continuously evolving to new and more powerful servers. And it's very, very much at the cutting edge of what's available. One question that's come up in a few different ways is, um, what do you plan of, what, what is the best resources available for learning on Shape? What do you recommend for someone that wants to learn on Shape books, websites, different content? Well, so best ways to learn, and again, I'll ask I'll ask uh, Cody to, to if I omit anything, jump in. But 
I'd start with um, uh, our learning center, which is brand new, is a great place. It also depends on the student what they're trying to accomplish. You know, there's different places to go if you're if you're an expert who's worked in CAD for 20 years and you're looking at you know at doing direct editing on imported parts, that's one thing. And if you're a college student looking to do some of your product design class, that's another path. And so we have the learning center is a great place to start with the classes. I call particular attention to the fundamentals data management one, which, you know, even if you're an expert parametric CAD user or used PDM or whatever, you're going to find data management on shape has a lot of cool power and potential, but you have to kind of learn the differences. You're no longer copying files around. So I call, my, I call your attention here. In addition to this, we've got great forums. We've got a great online help system. So, so you definitely want to learn to use forums in the online, um, um, online help. We also have support for, for you know, for particular um, challenging feedback questions. You can go to support as well. Um, in the feedback tool, we also have um, we also have um, live training, which has been very successful. We've put an enormous number of people through live training classes that happen over the internet. So you don't have to leave your desk, but it's live meaning. The learning center is self-guided, self-paced. There's no person at the other end. Our live training has an instructor who's who's running it. And you can join a training class that way. It's a more conventional training experience. A lot of people prefer that. That is not going away. It's something we offer as well. There's also um, uh, webinars. Um, and you can not only see uh, fresh webinars, but you can review some of the past ones. Dan's brought them up on the screen. The pre-recorded webinars are a great place. You can find, um, oh, and here you're showing all the videos. Our online video library has tons of instruction. The What's New Guide is really often a kind of tutorial or training guide to new features, too. So these you know, What's New videos, which Cody stars in about half of them, right? Um, and does a great job. You know, the, the, you know, you, I'll watch a one-minute video that Cody's produced to help me learn to use a new aspect of the system. So it's a, you know, it's a great question we ask how you learn because there are so many places to go. And um, uh, yeah, the, the, the blog posts. Also, we have independent trainers and training materials that are coming online in our partner program now, where people will will offer that. You can even see, um, I've seen some YouTube videos that are independently produced. So um, a lot of different resources out there. I would take the time to look around to get familiar as a new user with the blog, the What's New page, the forum, the training center, the, um, the idea of the classroom-led training. Those are sort of the minimums. But it is a lot, a lot of stuff to take in. All right, so the-, the Maybe we need a training center for training. <laughs> it says here's all the ways you could learn, right? Actually, I, I, it's probably time for a blog post on all the ways you could learn. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. Um, right? Dan, maybe yeah. Let's, let's get one of us to, to do that. I think that would be a really nice thing to add because there are so many ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I think we have time for one more. And it's a question that I see in repeated several different times. It also got to be an email um, and, and one form or another. You know, what does Onshape do to secure my CAD data? What do we do uh, in terms of security and encryption and all those kinds of things? OK, so the answer is we do a lot. And the beauty is we do a lot so you don't have to, you know, in a sense. And so, so the first thing we do is we secure it through our fundamental design. I mean, the best way to, to make sure a copy is secure is to not make the copy. So those of you using traditional CAD, you know, everyone you work with has a perfect digital copy of your, your, your CAD data on their computer. Not so with Onshape. I already covered that a few moments ago. So by design, we've secured a lot, okay, for starters. Second thing is, we take extraordinary measures to secure our data centers um, to, uh, to a level that is beyond what almost any CAD user I've ever encountered can do. You know, so we have, um, we have extensive security policies and procedures. We're in highly secure data centers that are, you know, that are at the level of security that is used by the largest banks and corporations, things that a typical CAD user can't afford to do. We have a dedicated staff here that are experts and stay current. We also retain um, 
for, we retain uh, outside consultants, including people who are ex-NSA, um, to do regular um, testing of our security and evaluation. Some of the procedures we take, we, we I, by, by nature of them, it's better that we don't talk about them because we don't want to say what we do exactly because there's always people out there. But we believe, you know, there's, there's no such thing as absolute security in the world, but we believe that we're able to offer people a level of security that's far beyond what they would ever be able to manage in their own company. And again, by architecture, um, personnel, procedures, technology, vigilance, and it's a continuing, we're always getting, you know, always introducing new and better ideas on it. Oh, also for those of you, I'm sorry to go on with long answers, but there's so much here. If you haven't already done it, activate two-factor authentication in, um, in Onshape. That's one thing you can do. To, you know, there's, so, there's only so much we can do. Remember that most data losses are due to social engineering and, and causing you to give up your password or something, you know, or, or a keyboard logger or something. So you really want to turn on your two-factor authentication in Onshape, um, uh, which, which will require you to use a, uh, a continuously changing numeric code that issues on your own personal cell phone. Um, I, I just did a bunch of study on this issue, and these are, these are viewed as a very good step in security. So make sure that you're doing your part here, and Dan's bringing it up now. Please um, do it. We haven't made a requirement, but um, I think uh, we probably should at some point. It's just a super good idea for, for anyone to do with any of these apps. And one more uh, thing I, I would add to that is recently, um, JR actually did a webinar. So if you're really interested in the details uh, right. of our security, um, I would definitely recommend checking out that webinar. It's very good on the topic of security in particular. One thing that he mentioned I think was really uh, valuable, a valuable insight is a lot of the theft of intellectual property that you see in the news is of private companies, right? Not data centers. So right. it, it's, you know, right. I think that Onshape has the potential to give you a more um, secure solution than anything you could get, you know, internally. But that is it. Yeah. It, is, it is officially time. So um, I know we didn't wow. get to quite everything. I know there's a lot of questions there. We tried to get to all of the different ones, but uh, of course, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people here very interested. So um, that's what we had planned. Uh, John, do you want to finish thing, finish anything up? Um, I'll just close by saying uh, a thank you. I hope my, I know in some cases I gave long answers, but they're they're interesting questions, and I sure appreciate all the questions. I know there are many others, as Cody said. I just want to close again by saying thank you to um, our customers out there, um, for, you know, for for um, for being being customers, for being users, and most of all for giving us the return on our investment, which happens when we see you build great products. And we love to see those things. If anyone out there has built a great product that they don't mind um, publicizing a bit, we're always looking for candidates to post those stories on our blog and talk about it. And so again. I say thank you to all of you and know that we're working hard to make Onshape uh, not just the product, but our whole community and all our processes better and better for you. And that's why we do it. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining and have a good day.